After my boyfriend beat Breath of the Wild, he set the controller down, reflected on the 250 hours he had just spent in Hyrule, and said, Wow, you know what I could really go for right now? More Zelda. So he got his Wii U out of the dumpster, and I watched him play Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, and Majora's Mask. But that one was on 3DS, so from where I was sitting it looked like this. At this point, it's safe to say I'm pretty much an expert on Zelda and understand the timeline perfectly. Oh, okay. I don't even have time to tell you how wrong you are. Actually, it's gonna bug me if I don't. All right, I admit, I don't have a clue what's really going on across these games, but they're super cute and I can help with the puzzles and stuff. So I was very excited to come home one day and see this on the TV. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was inevitable. It was always going to happen on this channel, and what better game to celebrate 500,000 subscribers than the one to rule them all. Thank you guys for sticking with us and watching our videos. We love you so much and this is the most fun thing ever in our lives and okay, on to the review. But this isn't a review of Ocarina of Time. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays Ocarina of Time. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. We'll tell you all about it at the end of the video, so don't go anywhere. This is the oldest game I reviewed so far, and even though it still holds up pretty darn well, Oh, oh look at it! Oh my god! Oops, sorry! It's exactly the same. My boyfriend felt the need to constantly explain what it was like to experience 20 years ago. The year is 1998. You're a small child who has never been <laughs> on a long three-dimensional adventure such as this. And you're watching this screen right now. You're going, holy sh**, mom, What's get he in doing? here, mom. Why was that kid humping that mound? And to be honest, Ocarina of Time made me feel like we were in 1998 because it turned him into a kid again. Uh, Look at him. <laughs> Do you wanna know what happens next? Hey, find out next week on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did he relive every moment with childlike wonder, epic slow scuttle, and reconnect with a version of himself that was lost in time, he also named his character I Farted. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it would be good. I'm Zelda, Princess of Hyrule. I farted. Get back, I farted. That's a good one. Now, before we get into why this is obviously one of the greatest games of all time, as well as an amazing backseat experience, let's make fun of this stupid old geezer. You know how you love your grandma, your nana, your sweet old gam gam? But also sometimes you're like, damn grandma, it's a cell phone, not a rocket ship. Ocarina is like that. You love it, but oh lord, give me patience. Since this was one of the first 3D titles that a lot of children would get their hands on, it is constantly telling you what to do and how to do it, mostly through a fairy named Navi. Hello. In theory, she is adorable and I love her. In practice, she is the most annoying thing from any game we've played so far. You know that lady at work who tells you how to do something that you already know how to do and you kind of hate her for assuming you're stupid? That's Navi. Hey, listen! Just a moment. No matter how many times you've opened a key door, any time you get close to one, she's like, Hey, listen! Oh, you're fighting a bat for the 50th time? Hey, listen! Oh, you're trying to use up C to look around in first person? Sorry, you gotta listen to Navi first. And she's probably just going to tell you to go to the place that you're at right now. To make her even worse, you can't use the B button to skip her dialogue like everyone else. So my boyfriend would just mash the A button like, Shut the f then there's this owl who doesn't even give you a choice. He just locks you into conversation, talks forever, then asks if you want to hear it again, which obviously the answer is no. But sometimes it's a trick question and no means yes, and if my boyfriend clicked the wrong one, he'd be like... No. One time the owl didn't fly away like he usually does, and if we got within a foot of him, he would start the whole conversation over. Oh no, you stupid God Oh my god. He's not letting me skip through any of this. <laughs> oh. Mother. <laughs> Will you save so we can make fun of this owl in our video? Yes. Now, I'm not going to be too hard on this game's graphics because I love them, but some of the 100% intentional animations would 100% be considered a glitch if it came out today. Whoa! I what the heck was that arm? Did you see her arm? Dun, 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 ah! Oh, shoot. Ah! Oh, God! And I wouldn't oppose some character remodeling. Like, maybe if Link's nose wasn't the Triforce? And I wonder how many kids got their game taken away because their parents walked in and were like, What the heck? Is that a drag queen taking a piss on Peter Pan? 
That just makes Ocarina all the more endearing to me, though. It's amazing to see how their limitations and going where no developer had gone before influenced so much creativity. They couldn't rely on star-studded motion capture and voice acting to keep a story going. They couldn't rely on hyper-realistic graphics and a giant open world to keep you exploring. They just had some triangles and good old-fashioned imagination. None of the whopping 32 megabytes used to create this game go to waste. A complaint I have about today's open worlds is that they're so empty with mindless NPCs walking around, copy-pasted buildings you can't go in, and miles to travel with nothing to do. But even though Ocarina is 100 times smaller than something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it has 100 times larger ideas. Every location, every character, every puzzle, every cutscene, every sprite is nearly unforgettable. In tiny little Kakariko Village alone, there's a lady who lost her chickens, a haunted house where people were turned into spiders, a graveyard full of secrets, a terrifying well that protects an ancient relic, and a windmill where you learn the Song of Storms from a guy who learned it from you when you were a kid, so hold up a minute, who wrote that song? Even just a tree or rock probably has some sort of surprise for you to discover, like rupees or a cow. Each dungeon serves a purpose in the world and lore with puzzles that match the theme and teach you how to use the amazing new item you found there. Then the bosses are always so unique with an often tragic or terrifying backstory. Look who it is! Ginger Dwarf. <laughs> Ginger Dork. And to top it all off, one of the characters you've met finishes their arc, becomes a sage, and gives you a quarter for your troubles. But the icing on the cake is the ocarina itself. Incorporating an insanely good soundtrack into the plot and history of Hyrule, then letting the player become some sort of time-traveling musical warlock by tootin' a flute is just the best. This has got to be my favorite game mechanic of all time. You know it's not my favorite? Trying to play this on the Wii U Virtual Console. The input lag was so bad that my boyfriend could press a button, take his hand off the controller, and poke me on the nose before I farted did anything. I didn't like the way it was making that sound and showing me a big X. <laughs> it was like, dunk, dunk, like I was some <laughs> dummy, dunk. It made the song sound poopy and the combat super frustrating. You gotta really swing it fast. <gasps> Dude, I'm literally pressing it oh as soon God. as he throws it. Oh no, he's gonna beat us. Oh no, my no death run. <laughs> Oh god! Oh god! Dude! Oh, no. Dude! There's a. Th it's a. Th the last thing I'll say is that if your boyfriend has ever stayed up till 2 a.m. watching Ocarina of Time speedruns, he might waste a lot of your time trying out some pretty sweet moves. Speedrun. So you do this, and then you do like that, and, you do, and then she kisses the horse, and then now Ganon is defeated. I think we're pretty close to the world record right now. If I can just pull this one last thing off. Backflip, jump, jump, slice, slice, and go. Milk. Okay. Speed run. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> Obviously, Ocarina is the freaking bee's knees, but I'm guessing most of you don't need me to tell you that. You know what I will tell you about? Squarespace. You may not know this about me, but before I was a world-famous YouTube phenomenon, I spent my free time making soaps and skincare. When I decided to turn my hobby into a little business, I frequently found myself stuck trying to build a brand. Had I known about Squarespace, I'd probably be a billionaire soap lady by now. Starting a website for your business with Squarespace is super easy. Using any of their beautiful templates, you'll quickly be the owner of a website with full access to analytics like page views, traffic sources, and more. Want to make sure your business is being seen by the right people? Squarespace uses all the best practices for search engine optimization without needing any extra plugins. In addition to configuring third-party domains, customers can purchase domains directly from Squarespace. Create a powerful visual experience on your website using video backgrounds. Communicate with customers using Squarespace's integrated commenting system. Schedule posts in advance so you can get all that boring stuff out of the way and focus on your business. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your website, check out squarespace.com slash girlfriendreviews and add code girlfriendreviews for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the billionaire soap lady of my dreams. Okay, you guys, seriously, thank you so much for watching and getting us to 500,000 subscribers. This has been the craziest seven months, and we couldn't have done any of it without you, our third wheels. Guess what else I wouldn't have done? Beat Doom, which I still haven't done, but soon, like probably today. So come hang out with us on Twitch. Okay, thanks again. Bye.